this is how you change the leathers in a windmill pretty easy check it out so step one we got to take all this stuff kind of apart and pull this rod out it goes down the ground about 25 feet i think is one stick it's 24 25 feet so we got to pull that out but the problem is i got a storm coming and this is like my only chance to really do this for a little bit of time so yeah get it done now hopefully we can beat the storm i am a little nervous with the wind blowing it is moving that up there because that stick's going to come out and i'm going to have to kind of fish it through there so we're going to have to be kind of careful how we do that but uh yeah keep your fingers crossed we don't break anything here well we got our top taken off and our downspout and a lot of times you, you might be careful dropping these down when you unhook that to the rod that goes all the way up to the top. But uh, this one, this is only one stick and it wasn't very hard so I didn't worry about it that much. Here's a pretty important tool you'll need. This is called a dog leg. Uh, it's just something that helps hold that pipe up. So that's just set down here on top of that bottom pipe. I'm going to loosen this up a little bit here, this piece, just a little bit more and just hike that pipe all the way up through the top of that hole. So I guess here we go. Keep your fingers crossed. We'll see how this, this works out. A lot of times if you grab a pipe wrench and use that as leverage, it makes it a little easier. Okay, here we go. This is when it gets really heavy. One, two, three. Okay, pretty much off there. This heavy sucker out of the hole. Okay, on the bottom piece. One, two, three. Okay, we made it out. So this is where you gotta be careful and you gotta set it down on a pre-planned spot. There you go. We got it. That is what is in the bottom of one of these windmills. And this, this right here is called a cylinder. This piece right here is called a cylinder. That just simply unscrews. There's a plunger in there. There's another piece that unscrews in there. So let's figure out and get this thing off so I can change the leathers in it. And then you use this to pick the, pick the weight up a little bit here. Or whatever you gotta use to pick the weight up. that and then just give yourself a couple good lockdown straps ratchet thingies whatever you want to call it there now you can work on that a little easier so now i gotta unscrew this bottom piece off that top which there we go gotta take this piece apart next go all right and this piece will come down all the way to wherever you need it to go all right there's a good spot uh, gotta love a ford tailgate this is what's at the bottom we gotta pop a pop a top off one of the ends and then i'm gonna replace this piece here but inside of here is the leather so let's go ahead and take this piece off and see what it looks like down in there Another thing to remember when you're taking these off is uh, be sure to put your pipe wrench in the middle piece. There's there's like a ribbon around these. You can crush these if you're cranking on them a little too hard. I have done that in the past. Always put grease on these things when you put them back. If you, if you want to grease that up, last time you did this, or put anesthes on it. <laughs> Good luck getting that off, man. Come on, there we go. Yep, all right. Whew, we got it. Yeah, I guess they were a little shot. So these these are what I was talking about. The leathers in there. This is what keeps the well pumping. And then obviously this thing here is the cylinder. And in the bottom of this, I don't know if you can see it. There's a little valve. It's a check valve. We'll clean that up too. Goes in there that way. 
and so as those as this thing goes up it sucks water up in into the cylinder in that cylinder and then as it pushes it back down this little valve opens and the water flows up through there then as soon as it pulls it starts pulling back up again that valve shuts so as long as this thing isn't too bad a shape it should be all right it doesn't look bad i'll wash it anyways so this is how they go go back apart you got your 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 bottom piece your check valve goes in there stick a leather on there this piece goes in there the secondary leather goes back behind there and bam should be ready to rock it's amazing just a little bit of this stuff will save you such a headache down the road all right let's slap this thing back together stuff on there and another thing I like to do is when you get them all put back together is all these joints where metal's exposed just put a little black tape on it it uh, you'll thank yourself later and it doesn't take much either just one wrap just something to keep the scale off the metal there you go that's more than enough for that one and now this 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 right here is a coupler they get worn out pretty darn quickly so I always change them out every time I got one off here's the old one and this is what a new one looks like so as you can see they do get worn down pretty darn quickly there we go. now stick her back in there top back on plop was that piece and that is how you change the leathers in a windmill all right Shoot. Now that we got all that put back together, let's just give it a quick double check and see how it works. And I'm gonna give it just like you would. Oh yeah, it's pulling a lot more water. Here's another quick tip of why you don't want your stroke on your windmill to go all the way to the bottom because it will hit that check valve. For example, is what I'm talking about is this thing. See how I'm holding water? See how it's holding water at the very tip? I'll go ahead and drop it down all the way it'll hit that check valve and it can't open them up like that right there so that's why when you have your windmill running you never want it to hit dead bottom center because it'll open that up just a little tidbit of information for you guys never let that stroke hit all the way to the bottom because if you go halfway it'll hold that water all day long but if you let that windmill stroke hit the bottom dead center up goes your water okay Let's put this puppy back in and see what happens. This piece goes. This is where it's really handy to have that top held up up there. Makes it so much easier. There we go. Good start. So, definitely want your gloves and do not let your fingers go here. If your fingers start getting close to that, just let it go and back off and run away. This is the way I have lent them down in the past. It works, it's kind of sneaky. Some people don't like it, but it works, okay. So yeah, a strap, you can do a lot with a strap. There we go. Okay. So yeah, this thing here, like I said, I can let this pipe down just by loosening this string up a little bit. One hand, you can stop it or hold it. Pretty slick little trick. All right, now we can do a little faster. Okay. 
this up here. This you can put tape on it if you want. I don't worry about it because this is typically above the bottom center of that, which is where the water's coming out. This piece here, you definitely want as much of that uh, anise grease or whatever because this is where a lot of dirt builds up and comes down off the top of the windmill. This is always usually your worst piece to get undone. Okay, so I'm about to release the brake. The wind's blowing a little bit as you can see from them windmills or from those windmills. Uh, you don't want the bottom to be locked down when you're putting this back together. You want it to be able to, if it goes past top dead center, to be able to pick everything up and then you can readjust your depth accordingly. I should be pretty close because I got everything right back next to where the old holes were. I thought, oh my goodness. Did I do good or did I do good volume out of a really light, light breeze? Before that wasn't even pumping water at that rate. So we've definitely improved something. <laughs> I'd like to get rid of all of this system and then have a one 1,000 gallon tank and then coming off 1,000 gallon tank, a bigger hose to, to put into something really short and shallow as an overflow. Probably, probably in all reality, it's gonna be this Lumix tank. I like this Lumix tank because it's not very far off the ground. You know, those little calves, they can come up and get a drink out of there real easy. As opposed to one of these bigger tanks. If it, if it gets sucked down a little bit, they're going to have a difficult time getting a drink out of something like this. But yeah, so, <clears throat> I don't know. We got it swapped out. Our thunderstorm that was coming never did really materialize. It's uh, got a little bit of blue sky, which is, which is good. And that, guys, is how you put new leathers in a windmill. Thanks for watching. Be safe.